Um, what kind of reaction did you get? Well, you know, with this book, uh, Kill Anything That Moves, Real American War in Vietnam, I, uh, I knew that there'd be a lot of critics there because, uh, you know, I focus on uh, the state of Vietnamese civilian suffering during the war, and it draws upon records that were of uh, American atrocities uh, that were compiled by the U.S. military. And uh, I, I knew there'd be a backlash, and uh, there has been in some quarters from some veterans uh, who are angered about the book. They think that I'm besmirching the, uh, all veterans, that I'm calling all uh, veterans war criminals, and it's something I try to take pains in the book not to uh, uh, to dispel that that, that myth. Uh, but you know, I'd have to say that about 80 percent of the feedback I've got from veterans has been positive, and it's been especially heartening and, and humbling. I've just been uh, it's been a deluge of letters, emails, Facebook posts from veterans who told me that um, you know these are things they kept inside often for for 40 years. Uh, What's the story that uh, stayed with you the most that you uncovered? Well, there's um, you know one one veteran story really encapsulated everything for me. His, his name was Jamie Henry. He was a medic in Vietnam, a, a reluctant soldier, but he went, fought. Uh, and the men in his unit said he was from the finest medics they served with. He saved a lot of American lives, but uh, but Jamie saw things in Vietnam that really disturbed him. Uh, from his first day in the field, he told me that um, you know, he watched as the point man, the lead man of his patrol, molested a young girl in front of everyone. And Jamie said to himself, you know, my God, what's going on here? And uh, after that, he saw a litany of atrocities take place, especially you know, gruesome things uh, culminating in a, in a massacre of 19 women and children in a small hamlet. And after that, Jamie resolved that he was going to make this public. And uh, he did everything that he could uh, to do so. He went and talked to an army judge advocate, a lawyer, about it. And that man told him to, to keep quiet because there are a million ways the army could make him disappear. He talked to an army criminal investigator, and that man threatened him. Uh, he wrote to several congressmen, and neither returned his, his letters. He went on the radio. He, uh, he, he wrote an article, public forums, the Winter Soldier investigation, where 100 veterans came together and gave testimony. But he could never get any traction. And what he didn't know was that the military did a uh, very thorough investigation of his allegations. They produced several phone book sized stacks of records, corroborated everything he said. And, uh, but he never knew about this until 40 years later when I showed up on his doorstep with them. Uh, you know, and his story really encapsulated things for me. He was, a, he was a, you know, one of these veteran heroes of my book. I mean, if there are any heroes in the book, it is American veterans who are willing to, to speak up. And the, the trials and, and tribulations he went through to try and get this public, only to see it disappeared, uh, he thought, forever. Uh, you know, that, this story always stuck with me, and, and I came to know Jamie as a, first a source and, and then a friend, and uh, uh, you know, it really meant a lot to me.